Greetings, D&D players, enthusiasts, and observers alike, and welcome back to Chronicles of Korea. My name is Emma, and I will be your DM today and every day that this wonderful campaign exists. Now, before we get to our usual character intros and recaps for tonight, I have a very exciting announcement for all of you. So, as of this Thursday, September 1st, Chronicles of Kriath will have a Patreon. So, if you've been wanting more content from us than our weekly craziness and shenanigans, please go take a look at our tiers and consider subscribing when that comes out on Thursday. Every little bit that you guys put towards it goes towards us keeping our show running. So thank you in advance for anyone that decides to sign up. We've been having a blast making this content for you guys, and we can't wait to share even more with you. But now that we've gotten everyone excited, let's go around the virtual table as usual and introduce our players. So we will start to my right with Andrew. Hello, I'm Andrew, playing Bael Thu, the reborn lizard folk, druid cleric of the star-related subclasses, and yeah. Indeed, indeed. And what a wonderful lizard-born he is. <laughs> anyway, moving on, from our lizard-born to our the player of our wonderful eldritch horror, we have Gia. I was snacking because I thought it was snack time. I didn't realize I was going next. It's me, Gia, everyone. What an introduction. <laughs> I am playing uh, Chatwin Darcy, reborn uh, sorcerer of a spooky subclass. Uh, very excited to be here as always. And we are very excited to have you and your spooky craziness. And we move on from said spooky craziness to the roguish craziness of Nathan. Why, hello. I am back again playing. Rubo, Asimar, pain in the ass, uh, fuckboy extraordinaire. That's me. Yes, 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 it is. And from our fuckboy extraordinaire to the player of his love interest at the moment, though they haven't really, they both seem to be in that in-between phase of flirty, but not realizing the other person's flirting. We have Rosie. <laughs> I have one big gay moment and that's uh, hi i'm rosie i play elon a guardsman from the city of korea i'm not gonna say ultimate pretty boy anymore but he is a fighter uh champion fuck you too emma thank you very much <laughs> all right we move on from the pretty boy from korea to the dad of the party last but not least with Jeremy. Hello, everybody. I'm Jeremy, and I play the resident artificer, blacksmith, slash dad of the party, and that's Damien. And Damien is kind of looking forward to what new adventures we get to have. Uh, being around all the lizard folks a little weird, though. Well, absolutely, because <laughs> they've definitely been weird to you guys. So, last time, for those who don't remember the lizard folk craziness, our characters were not greeted as warmly as they'd hoped to be when they returned to Thelthu's home, which is the Star Grove in the Snakeskin Fields. From the moment that the group was led through the forest and into the small village, uh, everyone seemed very hesitant and wary about their presence. And we learned why after Thelthu spoke with an old friend and mentor, the village's elder Mutit. Uh, with her help, he was shown the memories that he'd lost of his life, his death, and he was informed of the misfortune that him coming back to life brought everyone. He was also told that they seem to have been abandoned by their god, Horakash, and haven't been able to speak to him in a while. So she requested his aid in regaining the favor of that deity. So now we come back to the party as the last rays of sun are beginning to disappear over the horizon. The party has finished up what shenanigans they needed to get up to in the town and are preparing for bed. Are there any last minute 
things that anyone needs to do before everyone goes to bed. Remind me, is anyone taking watch as well? If it's discussed, I might do a watch, but it really it's the option of if there really needs to be one. Uh, Damien's going to be staying up because he's going to be working on some stuff with uh, the metal he acquired. Okay. I'm staying up for the first like half of the night since I only have to sleep for f- like four hours anyways. I'll stay up for the first half of the night. Completely fair. And I presume at some point at the, the special specific hour for rituals, I will be attempting to com- you know casually communicate what I got. Indeed, indeed. Robo's just out cold. Yeah, the nail one's going to bed. <laughs> Fantastic. Not not with Rubo. Not yet. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, Elon, you head to bed. Rubo, you're already snoring away. Felthu, for the ritual, you would know that you typically wait until a bit of time has passed and there's no hint of lighter sky left. And it's just the dark black sky and the stars. So that would be closer to like midnight 1 a.m. area. I assumed as much. But so as you await the time of your ritual, Jeremy, you said that Damien's going to be working with that metal. Uh, What exactly is he looking to do? He is currently working on um, a prototype of the claw-like design that him and Shadwin were talking about. Right. Oh, since I'm staying up with him, I'll skitter on by, sit beside him, and kind of work with him on it. Awesome. Show him the acid I got. <laughs> oh, boy. Do you think this would corrode, um... Do you have a little piece of test uh, leather or something that we could use this on? Do you think it's strong enough to corrode? It probably will. It is acid. I was thinking of making the claws replaceable, as they're probably going to corrode with time. So having some spares set aside that can be easily attached. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. That'd be a lot of work on your part, making all the new claws, but um, we'll prototype, prototype. I highly doubt that the claws will corrode that quickly if it's just used and then cleaned. Mm. So I'm not going to need to make many, maybe like three or four sets of the claws themselves. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, prototype. We'll, we'll work on it. No, it's in work with him until I go to bed. So Jeremy, that would be a tinkering check, correct? Tinkering or smithing? Smithing, I believe. Okay. Can I give any kind of help action since I'm there, since I kind of created the prototype and I'm there? Yeah, I'd say you can give the help action. Okay, dope. Smith tools. That is a 19. Nice. That is a low roll. That's a very low roll. (laughs) Did you roll with advantage? Yeah. Oh, damn. I got a 19 and an 18, which means I rolled a 9 in it. Well, that's not a very low roll, but I rolled a 9 and an 8. Damn. Damn, indeed. Damien's Damien's pretty good with those smith tools, you see. Yeah. You're starting to feel a little bit of fatigue as you're getting into it. You've had a pretty long day of travel to begin with, when you haven't really rested quite yet. So as you're working away, you kind of feel the fatigue, and it makes you move a little slower. But I would say you can... I haven't quite looked at the crafting rules yet, but I'm going to say it would probably take you more than just more than a night to make it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I'm just trying to like get working on it, get mm-hmm. it to a stopping point and continue working on it again later. I would say you'd be able to get the glove portion that attaches to the hand done within the evening. Okay. You would just have to make the claws and the mechanism that those attach to so that they can be removed the next time that you sit down to craft it. I'm going to try and make a mold for the claws so that they're a lot faster to make and easier next time. So. Gotcha. But yeah, that's about as much as you would be able to get done within the time frame before you would need to go to bed with, unless you want to suffer a point of exhaustion. I'll take the point of exhaustion. Okay. Then if that's the case, if you're going to work through the night, then I'd say you'd be able to get the mold for the claws done, but that's it. Okay. Sounds good to me. Awesome. Alrighty. And as he's sort of hammering away, working on that glove, fell through the hour would roll around where the stars are bright and shining in the sky, surrounded by a dark, a dark sky. Yeah. I mean, I presume there's a good 
clearing spot somewhere to go to and he would go probably sit said spot under the stars and i mean it's not like he's ever done this before but attempt to reach out and pray and connect to horikosh and prior to doing so i am going to at least you know try all all the little tricks i have so i'll cast guidance if i may you may and then i plan on doing uh, yeah, if, if if you'll allow the reborn feature to get the extra d6, if this is a skill check and not a d100 roll. Actually, that should have been the first question. <laughs> this would be a religion check for you. Okay, then if you'd allow the guidance and reborn d6. I can allow that, yes. Okay, then um, yeah, he will sit and think and try to reach out, probably not saying anything out loud, but his thoughts are quiet, centered on the events of, well, the day, trying to find answers. Fair enough. So I add, religion is... (laughs) Uh, So I rolled a two. Oh, boy. (laughs) So two plus six from religion is eight, plus a d6 from reborn. Uh, is a three, so we're at 11. Okay. Uh, and I believe guidance is a D4? Yes. Okay. Uh, so it's a one. So in total, it's eight plus three for 11. So 12. <laughs> 12, okay. My metal dice have failed me. Indeed they have. You sit for a moment, and you begin to reach out in your mind. At first, there's nothing. And then... You get this brief flicker in your mind, almost as if you're seeing a star light up in a dark sky. Then you hear two words, fix it, echo out monotone and not sounding like they're coming from one particular voice, but the echo of something before that light fades away and you're left with, you don't feel anything. You try reaching out again, and you cannot find Horikosh. You cannot find that familiar feeling of the stars. Well, the fact that it was there at least for probably what would have been a second is something, but those words aren't great. Probably give it a couple minutes that they would sit waiting. Not waiting isn't the right word, but maybe reflecting on the two words, fix it, and say 30 minutes will, will pass before he returns to where the party is mostly sleeping and just go and for once not prop himself up against a tree to stare at the stars but actually just lay down on a patch of grass next to a tree or something okay and then chat when you would be heading to bed around this time as well correct or are you staying up with damien no after the first half of the night i'm going to be headed off so i i look at sail through laying on the ground <laughs> I just kind of, kind of shake my head. <laughs> I'm gonna go lay in my little tent. All right, and you all sleep soundly through the night as Damien works and works, and very soon the chirping of birds and the hustle and bustle of the early risers of the druids welcome you all to the morning. Who wakes up first, me or Adlon? <laughs> you want a rock paper scissors for it? I'm, I think D20s would be more appropriate, ladies. Okay, okay. God damn it. <laughs> I'm going to use my sparkly pink one. What would these people do, actually, if I'm just up and about, like, doing morning exercises? You would probably get some weird looks, but... Yeah, I imagine. <laughs> nothing crazy. Honestly, I think you'd have a weirder look for Damien, who's already up before you <laughs> at that point. Come on. Nat 20. Nat 20. I rolled a three. Ooh, I rolled an 18. Damn. Alrighty. Elon, as always, you are the first to greet the morning. Or you thought you would be, but you roll up out of your bedroll and find Damien still working away on something or other in the corner of the camp. Elon kind of stares at him, squints like that early morning sleepiness and it's just like, Jesus, old man, you're still awake. You wouldn't say Jesus, but you know what I mean. Uh, I'm used to pulling all nighters on a forge. It's it feels good to be back in my element. That's good. You okay? I'll be a wee bit tired, but that's fine. I'll just sleep in the cart when we leave. Who's gonna drive then? 
I'm sure you or Thealthu can do it. Uh, I would prefer you or Thealthu do it. Fair enough. Uh, you wanna... If they don't get up soon, by the time I'm done with exercises, then... Actually, should I wake them up? Or would it be too awkward here? If you'd like to. Nah, screw it. I'm going for a quick run to look around. I'll be back. And Avon's going to take off and kind of do like a little morning run after a quick little stretch and do that for a bit. Damien's going to go over and kick Rubo. It's like Elon's getting ready to head off. <laughs> oh, shit. Ugh. Five more minutes. Please. Elon's about to begin morning exercises. I thought you were... Uh... Pew! He's out of his bed. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> He's going to go back and continue his work. Do you guys hear the little meep meep as he left? <laughs> I'm just like sprinting along looking for Elon. Do I need to like find Elon? I didn't even ask where, where he was. This would have been right as he was getting ready to leave. Okay, so I probably see him like heading out. Yeah, you would see him running off into the woods. Hey, did you see Rubo like just come skidding to a stop? <sighs> I heard we were doing some some stretches this morning. All right, do your stretches. Come on. Oh, I don't know how to do it. Uh, I just kind of flex. I'm like, uh. sure. Raise your hands up to the sky. Touch your toes. You know. Okay. Uh, I uh, are we stretching together or? I mean, not for a run. Oh, you're gonna run? I'm going for a run. Okay. You up for it? Yeah, I can run. Remember, it's not the point to be fast. Just keep your pace and let's go. And he's gonna start going. Okay. I, I just take off. <laughs> Rubo, I'm going to say that since you're definitely not used to the lengths that Elon is used to running, make me a con save, please. Okay. <laughs> to make sure you don't start wheezing. Damien's over here getting his newfound son in shape by dangling a piece of Elon meat in front of him. A con save is a 16 for me, a 14 plus 2. Okay. So... You actually don't do too bad. You're huffing and puffing by the end. Definitely a, quite a bit more than Elon is. Yeah, I'm like I'm like sweating profusely because I'm in my like heavy armor, <laughs> chasing you around. Oh, that's right. You didn't take the armor off. <laughs> oh lord. <laughs> Which Elon, you would realize as you're coming to the last part of the run that you planned to do. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to end it probably and just, like, wait for him. And as he's, like, kind of exhausted, just give a big old smack on the back. You know, knocking some wind into him. Like, come on, breathe, breathe. I think I got it. <sighs> don't, 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 please don't pass out on me. No, I'm, I'm totally fine. We could, we could run twice then. You, you, you sure? Yeah, I'm, sh I'm sure. I'm just kind of hot. It's, it's a warm morning. Uh-huh. Um, all right, like, well, let's keep going. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Finish the last leg of everything. And off you guys go for more running. As Thelthu, you would likely come to next as the sun starts to rise further. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to at least wait for everyone to be around before I, you know, let people know what, <laughs> what happened uh, yesterday, so. Fair enough. And then, last but not least, chat when you would be woken by your usual alarm of Chatvin. Mm -mm. It's morning. Mm -mm. You must get up. <sighs> I just get up. I crawl out of my tent. Yeah. Snack a mosquito. <laughs> Bailthu? Yes? How'd you grow up in the woods? I don't like it. Oh, well, what's not to like? Bugs. Mm. And I'm not talking about the good ones like little spiders. I'm talking about like the mosquitoes. Don't think they bother us too much on account of, I don't know. Kind of looks more of his shoulder than, oh. <laughs> it just looks down, I guess. <laughs> Hard to see scales when most of his arms and legs are stars, but. Oh, right. Sorry, that felt insensitive for me. Smack! Another one off my arm. <laughs> I suppose with, um. You and the others, I, I suppose the mosquitoes have more to uh, eat now. Thing is, they, thing is, I think they're just doing to, it to fuck with me. I don't have blood flow. Oh, mm, right. Like, I think, I honestly think they're just evil. 
I'm like, there's, they're getting nothing out of it. There's, there's no, there's no purpose. Smack another one off my arm. There's no purpose to it. <laughs> Maybe they just don't know, and they are, they are insects. Ah, oh, I was going sick, rumply by Thealthu. <laughs> Can we spend the next 20 minutes having Theolthu discuss why the mosquitoes are trying to bite Chowan? <laughs> yes. But you guys would kind of set about packing up camp and stuff. Damien would still be awake, but you would get the majority of everything sort of packed up and ready to go whenever everyone else is as Elon and Rubo circle back to camp. Rubo wheezing very hard while Elon has a a glistening sweat that's it yeah a light layer of sweat so fucking stupid <laughs> <laughs> a fucking hot guy run god <laughs> sparkling like a fucking anime character Jesus Christ. I like uh catch up and I like just start like shimmying off my chain mail I just strip out of my shirt and I'm just shirtless like drenched in sweat we're blinded because he's so pale <laughs> very pale somehow, somehow grew up in a desert also very pale <laughs> you stayed out of the sunny parts of the desert yeah i, I stick to the shadows with the rogue thing I, it, 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 it fits he was never awake this early let's be fair <laughs> mm-hmm. true i'm a night man so i uh, i mean it's kind of up to you Thelfu, if if there's anything else that needs to be done. No. There's one or two things I must do before we leave, but it's quick conversations I have to have. Besides that, we are good to go. Uh, to the temples, I believe, right? That is definite where we are going next. Mm-hmm. Good. But I suppose before we, well, I go off to do what I have to do, I do owe all of you a bit of an explanation, I suppose, of uh, what happened. Well, the conversation I had last night. It's a, it's a good pause, as finds the words, but... If... All right. Uh, no offense, because Chatwin brought this up before. If you don't trust us with it, we understand. I just... If you've done something bad, it would probably not be good for us to be here. Well, it is not necessarily I'm the one who did something bad, but I'm the consequence of someone else's poor isn't the right word, but grief-stricken decision. The quick of the story is, well, my father had attempted to perform a ritual and it failed due to a, a lie and now here I am and he and others are dead and as such that is why many have been giving me uh, mostly me and I suppose maybe a few glances to you all looks and such and due to well how things are done here I am the one who's supposed to lead this circle of druids now but there are bigger issues at hand Fair enough. So do... What do we do from here is the question. What do we do? How can we help? Oh, well, we're already planning on going to the temples, so as long as we head there, that is all I need of, of, from you. If you all, of course, want to keep heading that direction. Yeah? Yeah, it's, it's where I want to be. Yeah, like I said before, I don't have any reason to be out here other than to just be out in the world. So, wherever you want to go. Oh, if we are going to head out, I'm going to probably take a nap in the cart while we go. Right, so we need to decide who drives, which is probably the biggest of our issues. I've been watching, can I try? Uh, uh well, Thelthu can talk to the horses, and Elon seems like a very observant type. Why don't me and, me, me and Chatwin can drive? I think it sounds like a better plan to me. I've never done it. I've I've always been taken places. I've never actually driven myself. I've 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 never done it before, but I'm excited to try. I'm all right with chat when driving. Rubo, I think you can sit up there and learn a little bit about how to drive before you jump feet first into it. I've I've rode a horse. Um, it's probably practically the same thing. I'm sure. Not at all. Control horse, control horse, same thing. <laughs> yes, one you're controlling with your legs and your your body st- t- uh, positioning the other one you're controlling with reins from a distance of a car and you gotta be able to convey your messages appropriately to them. I can sit up there with Aelon if Aelon thinks that he can drive. That's what I was going to say. Why don't we, why don't you sit with someone at least and whether it's me or Thelthu, I'm, I'm not used to a carriage but 
I, I do understand horses a little bit, for the most part. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, let's get going. Whenever you're ready, fell to. I'll go find the two I have to speak with before I go. And if uh, I suppose if there's anything else you all need, I could perhaps. Well, I, I don't want to ask too much of the others, but. No, I bartered for everything I needed. I traded soap, yeah, for acid. In, all right. <laughs> I got a good deal. <laughs> I don't exactly remember. Well, I remember many things now, but I don't. I suppose I don't remember how the barters necessarily go. I'll go and search for Muttered and Laggard, and I can meet you all at the front of town. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we can load up the cart and bring it around and make sure we're all ready to go. The author will go and look for the, the two. Muttit would be the easiest to find. She's always in her in her tree trunk, usually, unless seen outside in the clearing. Yeah, and he would just kind of go past the little the fabric, I think, and I was on a door. Yes. And yeah, see if she's awake. She would be. She would be meditating in the center of the room. He'll wait at least five minutes not to be rude, but if it takes longer than that, he will try to interrupt her. She would take a couple minutes, but not the full five. As you see, like you would watch and her face almost seems to be twisting in effort today rather than the usual calm meditations that you've seen. And she finally kind of snaps out of it. and You hear her kind of hiss a curse under her breath before she looks up at you and just goes, Oh, that's who. How was your ritual last night? It went, well, it was a start. Um, there is something that needs fixing and, well... I intend to find out what it is and to fix it, but I didn't get much. Well, I didn't get anything else other than that. Hmm, that's unfortunate. But I suppose that makes sense, seeing that well, no one's been able to even contact Horakash in any sense. We have not felt the presence of the stars in some time, so the fact that you even got that much is, seems to be a bit of a blessing. I suppose it is. Um, well, I have just come to say. Goodbye and thank you. We are, well, me and the others are going to try our best to uh, find an answer to this and hopefully fix it. Of course. But um, before you go, now that we have a leader again, it's been quite some time. You are, of course, I'm not saying that you need to stay here. Obviously, you have bigger things that need to be tended to. But it is customary for an acting leader to be appointed in the stead of one who has journeyed on for a time. I was going to actually ask about that. Or rather, who has been holding that role well, in my absence, I suppose. It's been passed around, depending on, well, what we need. We've been waiting for a sign from the stars to find someone else, because honestly, we thought you were dead. But seeing as the ritual worked, although not in the way that it's typically intended... That still makes you acting leader. Your choice will be respected regardless of whether we think it's competent or not. Well, I suppose there is one. Well, there are two options I see ahead of me. And I don't want to put that burden of leadership on you. So I believe I will go see if Laggart would take up the, the honor as a way for me to you know, forgive him, I suppose. That sounds like a wonderful idea, Thelthu. You have a kindness in your heart. Remember that as you travel. Don't leave it behind. I don't intend to. If, well, I don't intend to. Good. Now, I suppose it's not too much to ask for a hug before you leave? Of course not. And he'll, you know, hug her. (laughs) And she'll kind of hold you close for a moment, squeeze, let go, kind of take a look at you as if she was like a proud grandma, almost. Your parents would be proud. Oh, nod and Either, well, one way or another, I will fix this. If I return or not, well, that will be up to the stars. I will pray that they bring you back safely once again. You wouldn't happen to know where Laggard would be at this hour. He usually spends his mornings setting up for the hunt in the forest, so he shouldn't have gone too far by now, but that's likely where you'll find him. Right. Well, I suppose I am off then. It was... I don't think I can thank you enough. My pleasure. It was very good to see you. It, is, it was good to see you and, well, to remember. I'm glad I could help. And with that, he'll take one last look at her and go find Laggard. Alrighty. 
and you would head out into the forest. It wouldn't be too hard to find him because as you start kind of stepping through, he would sort of pop up from behind a bush, bow in hand, and just be like, scaring of the rabbits away as always, I see, Thelthu. Well, it was the easiest way to find you. Fair enough. Now that you've scared away dinner, how can I help you? Ah, well, it's early enough. I'm sure you'll find something larger than rabbits, but uh, I'd just come to well, say goodbye and ask you if you would take the role of the leader in my absence for however long it may be. Well, I don't see why not. I've had the trust of the the rest of the druids for a while, but I will accept the honor. I appreciate it. Good. If there's no one I can really think of to, to do what needs to be done for the village, and who knows the current situation, things that will come up. Hmm. Fair enough. Well, no one knows what's coming but the stars. And well, that is where I, that is what I'll be off to, trying to find that out and well, fix it. Well. Let's hope you can. Maybe that'll let some people move on from what happened. Yes, I hope. Hope so. I hope so. You remember everything now. I do. I do. And I hope. Well, I hope you do not. I hope it does not keep you up at night. Huh. I watched a childhood friend fall to his death in front of me. It helps that he's standing in front of me now, but it's not exactly something you forget. Oh, well, it's. It's all according to the stars, one way or another, I suppose. But um, no, it's it can't be. I, uh, it is tough to have not remembered and now know all the pain I have inadvertently caused everyone. Fair enough. If you think about it, which I have quite a bit, it was more your father's doing than anything. And no one wants to let go of a son or a brother or anyone close to them. But... Others lost far more sons and daughters and brothers because of his attempt to keep his. And that is why I hope to well, fix things, at least to give everyone the solace, knowing the stars are once again in connection with us all. For I don't feel right being, the, I don't feel right ruling over the tribe until then. Fair enough, but you earned it or you wouldn't be standing here. I mean. Death doesn't feel earned, but I hope to earn it at least on this journey. Death is not earned, but life, meaningful life, is. And from what I can see, if anything, you may not have been, well, you may not have wanted to forget, but it seems that forgetting for a time at least allowed you to rediscover some things about yourself, no? In a way, in a way. And it's... Well, not even necessarily discovering things about myself, but the outside world is it's a lot stranger out there than here. Not even just strangeness in this plane, this land. There's the time moves strangely in other places. There are tiny fairy folk, and there are a lot more things that well, I even now don't remember, but have only just learned. Hmm. Well, if anything, then these experiences were meant to bring you closer to the stars for a reason, and I wish you the best of luck on your journey to find that reason. Thank you, and I I know you will lead well, and not that there's many threats around, but if you can hunt a few rabbits, I'm sure you can protect the village. I will do my best, and I'll try to talk to everyone a little, see what I can do about giving you a bit of a warmer welcome next time around. You don't need to speak to everyone. I, If I'm successful, I'm sure everyone will feel the star's connection once again, and I think then the wor the welcome will be deserved. Absolutely. But as you travel, Thelthu, promise me one thing. Of course. The connection of the stars can only fill so much of a void. Another void sits for a different reason. One that I'm sure you understand. They may not sweep that away so easily without it being addressed. Promise me you'll think about how that gets addressed. I don't think I necessarily know what you're talking about. I, that Those that lost people that day. It does need to be addressed, friend. I'll figure out something to say, or... I mean, there's not much I can do about it now, I suppose. But uh, I'll have plenty of time to think of, of words. Good. See that you do. And he'll kind of place a hand on your shoulder 
Until we meet again, my friend. Until then. Don't go falling off any more cliffs. I'm going to try my best to not be climbing anything for a long time. Good. Stars guide you. And may they guide you as well. He nods, wanders off, and is like, well, now I have to find a new hiding spot. <laughs> and Sarah starts <laughs> grumbling to himself as he continues walking into the woods. I'll uh, return to everyone else, and, well, if you're all ready to go, my business is done. Oh, you're all good? As good as things can be right now. I, uh, I'll give Falco a pat on the shoulder. If we're ready to head out, then let's get going. Yeah, I'm gonna sit in the driver's seat with you, right, Adon? Yep, get on up there. Damien's already snoring in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Those old man snores just... So upsettingly loud. <laughs> but yeah, you guys all climb on up and find your spots in the in the cart. And Thelthu, you watch as you head off and various druids kind of follow as the cart returns to the forest once again. And again, you watch as the village gets smaller and smaller and you make your way back out on the dirt path towards the road. Now, as you return and find the road once again, you would be met with two days of travel down to the coast where you would cross to Escargo Island. These days would be free for you to use as you see fit. So as the grassy hills of the snakeskin fields pass you all by for the remainder of your journey, is there anything specific anyone wants to do? Elon, whenever he has downtime, is going to write another letter to Esme, ready to be sent as soon as he gets that chance. Alrighty. You would have plenty of time in between switching drivers to write up that letter. Can I, on day one, when I'm writing next, right next to Elon, since he's driving, I've been sitting in my little journal, I have my little paints out. I've been painting the feet, the grasslands around us on an empty page. At one point, I just look up, I look over at Elon. Hmm. Elon. Yeah, chat one. It, forgive me for being blunt, but I reach up and I poke the ends of my ears, looking at him. If you're being quiet, he finally will look over, then look immediately straight, and probably turn a little bit red. Right. Is that why you were so... Because I noticed you... When I was talking about my mother, because she's high elven and my father is a human, I noticed you were kind of... Not, not weird about it, but, you know, unnatural about it. Can I put it maybe in terms that I hope you would understand? Please. If you were highborn, brought into a prominent family, and say all of you were the same thing, and then somebody is born different, would that, what would your family do to you? I mean, obviously I'm different now, but I was the only person in my family um, to gain powers like this. And they didn't know what to do, but they got me all the education that I needed. They listened to me. They were, I'm sorry if your family wasn't the same way. I'm, I'm glad they assisted you. My family have no love for me because... A secret like mine could bring the whole family down. I hid it because it, I've always been taught to hide it. And what if they sent someone out here to befriend me, to assassinate me for it, so that the secret would no longer get out? They take a very serious look to you. Chatwin kind of has a distant look in her eyes. She's really thinking about what you're saying to her. I went home not long ago, and my family asked me to be normal again. I can't do that, so... They're not to the extreme that yours are nowadays, but... They did ask, they have asked for me to keep things on the down low. I'm only telling you this because once upon a time, you asked for a secret for a secret. <laughs> and it seems you've already given yours away, so... Right, I mean, thanks. I appreciate it. And if anyone is to honestly blame for a secret for a secret, he's going to reach behind his neck and pull Aliana out. It would be her. <laughs> and 
her having been sleeping on the back of your neck oh, clinging no. to your ponytail essentially would yelp as you grab her off the back of your neck and just kind of like catch her breath kind of clinging to your fingers for a second just be like what the fuck was that oh no Eliana <laughs> all right sorry to disturb your sleep Eliana but you told me this was okay little warning next time well it's midday I thought you'd be awake but I understand it's a boring ride how about this? I, you told me it was okay to take my years off. You need to tell her that even though most of her magic is surprising, she's okay. And she'll kind of look at Chatwood for a second, look back at Elon, kind of sigh a little. She's so like, I mean, yeah, it's not like I told him. There might be people that judge you, think you're scary. I'm sure you've encountered a lot of that, but... It is okay to be who you are. Anyone who doesn't respect it is not your friend. Something I've learned from my hundreds of years of existence, but... I appreciate that, Aliana. Uh, I would honestly invite everybody to come back to the Andrews Isle to see if they're wonderful people, really. They're just... Their heart's not in the right place. I just... But, you know, probably best I not to go back there for a little while. But, you know, when things cool down... Things cool down? Did you do something before you left? No, no, not really. People just... Let's just say there are some people that were on the verge of bringing pitchforks to the family estates. Well, that's not good. Yeah, so... I'm taking a gallivance until things cool off, essentially. That's... You got it, Ayla, and that's why I'm out here. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah. All right, Aliana. Do you want back? Finish your nap? I mean, if we've got nothing else to gossip about... Uh, we'll leave that for another day. I mean, I could I could talk about something with Ayla, but I don't know if he would like it. I go back to painting. <laughs> Aliana kind of raises an eyebrow. <laughs> You're gonna tease us with that. <laughs> Aliana, you and me can talk later. Just us girls. Oh, awesome. Girl talk. I like it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> why would I be interested? What are you in... thinking about, Ayla? I didn't say anything. If it involves just girls, then why would I... I would probably... Yeah, you're, you're, I mean, if you're girl... <sighs> girl talk i probably wouldn't enjoy it okay <laughs> i go back to painting <laughs> that's why she said that she'd wait until just her and i could talk so that the girls could talk yeah but but she also said that i wouldn't like it of course i wouldn't like it i'm not a girl so why state the obvious oh Elon. <laughs> i think you need a nap Elon. listen he just wipes his eyes at his face like i yeah yeah all right, go about your uh, girl business, then. <laughs> <laughs> I paint a little fairy into the landscape of the grasslands. Anyone else looking to do anything during your two days of downtime? I think at some point, Delthu is just going to ask, really, everyone in general. So I know we're all heading towards the Circle of Temples and there. Was there another reason we're going other than so I can try to speak to the Priest of Horakosh? I remember something about um, the angel of Raphros being mentioned. Right, because that was uh, what, the man in the in the Fey realm. He was, correct me if I'm wrong, but he was a follower of Raphros. Is that what we found out? I believe so. Yeah, I think that's just, those are the only two reasons why we're going. I think I want to find out about those things that pop out of my back. Maybe they have some kind of relation to the gods i guess right if i'm being honest i really want to know too i, I haven't asked because that would be rude uh, but you know yeah i i have no idea again i mean the first time it happened i was with all of you and i think i was about as surprised as you guys were rubo <laughs> that was the first time that happened it's been kind of a crazy couple of weeks here or whatever it's been so we, i guess we haven't had the time to really talk about this but yeah uh it had never happened to me before Oh, well, I mean, they're beautiful. Oh, well, thanks. That's not as comforting as you would hope it would be. Oh, well. <laughs> you should really try to practice with those while we're on the road, when we're going at a slow pace, you know? Yeah, I mean, I can give it a go. Sure. Just to get more comfortable. Just don't don't startle the horses, please. M maybe I'll do it when we, when we stop and we can kind of settle. Mm -hmm. Do you happen to have any idea... 
who you're going to ask or what god they may pertain to? I thought I would start with the Raphaeros thing when that man saw my wings. He mentioned something about the angel of Raphaeros. So I, I kind of figure I can start there and I don't know, kind of see what happens. I, I have no idea. All right, as long as we have more of a plan now, I suppose, other than, well, I know it's no big deal, but I don't know. There must be other things you all need or want to do other than helping me and, I suppose, my village out now. Yeah, I mean, really, the thing that I want to do is figure out a little bit more about if the gods have any connection to everything going on with that. I mean, maybe I just have cool metal wings and, like, you know, how Chatwin has, like, hands come out of her mouth or whatever maybe it's just my cool thing uh, that's not a cool thing that i can do that's a bad thing <laughs> oh it, it's kind of cool it's terrifying but kind of cool do you think that that's because of the gods no but uh is it because is it because of your and he pauses for a second nature hmm? and he just kind of glare like <laughs> glares at you for a second not not a mean glare but a, like you know what i mean yeah how do you mean he kind of looks around at everyone else. He's like, I don't want to blow your spot up if you don't want it blown up. I don't think Chatwin knows that Rubo is aware. Can I make some kind of insight check on him right now? Yes, I would say insight versus Rubo. Are you trying? Are you trying to insinuate what you're talking about? Or are you trying to? That she's undead. Yes. Yeah, is, is her cool thing not because of the gods? It's because she's undead. I just, I'd like to just throw in that they do is like kind of looking between them while this exchange is happening. I am almost glaring at Rubo. <laughs> like, I'm a fly on the wall. Do not look at me. <laughs> um, that's a, a 14. All right. I would say you would be able to pick up that he thinks he's figured out something about you. You're not entirely sure what he's insinuating, though. Hmm. I just kind of pat Rubo really carefully on the shoulder. Okay, Rubo. Well, I mean, I would like, very quickly changing the subject, (laughs) I would like personally to visit the Temple of Tainara, but that's not anything too um, major, just something that I I would be interested in doing. So it's the gods thing, not the other thing you think maybe? I want to go because I follow the goddess of the arcane and nothing else. I uh, lean in next to Chatwin and I go, Chatwin, it's it's the undead thing. The murder in Gia's face. <laughs> as Chatwin, I'm sorry. Uh, Chatwin, as your eyes kind of, as you kind of pause to think about what he said, Seth the Vex just going to kind of chime in in your head for a moment, moment and just be like, I told you they would figure it out sooner or later. I fully recoil away from Rubo, raise my hand as if to slap him and stop myself and instead grab him by the collar with my strength score higher than his, yank him towards me (laughs) and I'm going to speak very quietly in his ear. Rubo, I want to make myself very clear and I want to do it once. Please do not make me repeat myself. Okay. Whatever the fuck you think you know you're talking about, you don't. Please never say those fucking words to me again. Can I make an intimidation check on him? <laughs> you absolutely may, ma'am. <laughs> Does Damien wake up to the sound of Rubo being yoinked? What's your passive perception? What Do I make any kind of check against being intimidated? Or just get intimidated if she rolls well? I think so. I don't know that there's an opposing check. I could argue. I mean, there, I don't think there is either, but I think it could be argued that a charisma check against it like charisma as force of will to resist someone else's force of will or insight or something it says the opposed to targets modified level check i guess on wisdom okay i have 17 pass perception you would absolutely wake up to the sound of rubo like yelping as he's yanked towards chatwin just kind of like look at the two of them and wait for this whole thing to end. I got a 19, by the way. Okay. Yeah. Rubo, I think I'm going to say you can make an opposing check. I wouldn't say that it, I would use insight for that. 
So what I found says your intimidate check is opposed by the target's modified level check, which is a 1d20 plus the character's uh, wisdom bonus and then any saves on fear. Okay, so I'm going to say do a wisdom save. Gotcha. I definitely can't put him into a frightened condition. <laughs> I'm not I'm not at that level yet. Well, that's a 16 plus 1. So close but no cigar. Yeah, you kind of aren't sure how to react. This is Chatwin completely flipped a switch in your mind. Like this is not the fun Chatwin that has been your friend. It's almost like the the weird chat wind from the boat came back, but you don't, but without the evil, like foreboding feeling that came with it. I uh, kind of pull back away from chat wind and I go, Th- this is, I don't understand why. Listen, I don't need to do anything or say anything, but if you and Thialthu are doing whatever you're doing, I, it's not my fucking problem. I, I, I like being here. I like being your guys' friends, but this, I don't understand why it has to be s- secrets. Rubo, we don't pry into people's personal lives. Uh, so, so, the author definitely hears me say that. I say that like out loud to everybody. I was going to double check, but I thought so. I look at Thalthu. <laughs> I've gone from being intimidating to being really concerned looking. But David's going to be like, Rubo, we don't pry into personal lives. Everybody's got a secret or two. Let them, let them keep their secrets. <clears throat> I'm going back to sleep. After hearing that, getting the look from Chatwin. No, that it is. We are going. I mean, you all had mentioned, as I had asked, what intentions were at these temples. And I'm glad to know that we are not all just going for me, but I have the largest investment in this, I believe. So, I believe. And I've only been as upfront as I can be. And now, well, I'll be honest, I didn't tell you all the whole story back there the failed ritual and such. And, well, I can only speak for myself, but. There's no reason to hide it, I suppose. The ritual was to bring me back to life, and, well, he gestures to his limbs. Something didn't go right. Or maybe it did. I don't know. I, uh, take in what the author says for a second. I kind of glance at Chatwin for just a moment, but then kind of ignore her. And I say, well, we all ended up together, so something had to have gone somewhat right. Well, I am back amongst the living, so I would agree. I don't understand how any of it works all i know is that i can tell and i kind of like give a dirty look at chatwin for a second i don't like i when someone is and i I didn't want to bring it up earlier but i mean it doesn't change the way that you know anybody should look at you i don't think you being whatever you are is a good or a bad thing it does you just you are who you are it's changed you and I guess you have some understanding of your past now. It seems like it may have empowered you, given you access to strengths that either you didn't know you had or that you didn't have before. I think I'm going to walk for a moment. I jump off the cart and I'm going to walk alongside where the horses are. (laughs) Elon is going to halt the horses. No, keep going. Keep going. I can walk alongside. Continuous. It may not be a good or bad thing in and of itself. I mean, back to life, so to speak. But, well, I can say my past was merely an accident. And, well, I'm only back because of a mistake. A purposeful one, but a mistake nonetheless. We all have pasts, I I know. And I can only know that you all must have memories, just as I have relearned mine. It can be an unsettling thing, I suppose. I understand what you mean by a mistake, a thing that maybe shouldn't have happened. But... And he looks over at Elon with Aliana sh- on her on his shoulder. We literally met a goddess of fate. Can you call any of this a mistake anymore? Elon, who is in the front driving, who has not really been able to follow the whole conversation, is just like, I think we're just all fucked up. I think it's a bit more than that, but fate, I suppose it is one way or another. I've said it numerous times, stars lay up the path, but sometimes it's a challenging one, and one not all want to talk about. And as you said, it doesn't ma- it doesn't change your opinion of us, so it it just may not be a topic worth discussing in full. I really don't 
care to know or bother about it. It's just, I guess, we're all in this together now. And I guess I just want to be able to help Chatwin figure out whatever she wants to figure out. But I don't know. I don't know how to do that. Maybe maybe we can't. Time and perhaps if, well, can't heal if you don't want to or talk about it. So time, I'd say time. Can I ask you what might be a personal question? Something that you don't, feel free not to answer. Well, I've been as open as I can with you all before, and I intend to keep it that way. You you have your memories back now. Do you remember dying? What, come af- what came after it? Anything from that period? I can't say I remember what came after. Just what was right before, and well, after, yes, but... After being when I awoken again. I wonder if maybe that's a difference. Is Maybe Chatwin knows more of the downside to whatever happened. Perhaps. Perhaps. I don't know any really anything about the subject other than, well, what the end result may be. But I can only imagine there are ways beyond rituals regarding the stars to bring someone back to life. Well... We can just drop it for now. I've clearly upset Chatwin, and I really didn't mean to. I kind of thought that, and I kind of like peeked to see if Chatwin's still listening to us. Can I try to like perception to see if I can tell if Chatwin's still listening to our conversation? You can make me a perception check, yeah. 17 plus 2 is 19. No, plus 1, sorry, 18. Okay. Chatwin, are you still listening? I, at per- I got off the cart and started walking, so I would not have to hear anything Rubo was saying. So I'm trying my best not to listen, and I'm trying to put distance so I can't accidentally hear either. Perfect. She seems far enough away from the cart that I don't, at least I didn't think she could hear me. Yeah, she she's put enough distance that there's no way she would have heard anything you just said. Cool. I uh, go, I've, I've known about both of you for a while, and I, I did kind of already tell Damien and Elon. They do both know about my, uh, I think Damien thinks there are more suspicions. I don't know. He said he'd feel it out, but so uh, maybe we'll leave it alone. But just so you know, since now we're kind of openly talking about it, um, I did kind of when I first found out it was pretty early on, and I was a little nervous, so I did let him know. I hope that doesn't change anything. Not for me, but uh, I know I could only imagine Elon is listening to this. Um, I don't think the horses are that loud. <laughs> I don't, I mean, I don't think it's worth bringing up again, like you mentioned, until time has passed for sure, uh, certain, but it's all right by me. It's, it's a strange situation to be in, um, but it is just another facet of life at this point. I guess we can put this to bed for now, and if Chad ever wants to talk about it, then I don't know. Maybe if, if she comes to you first... Since you guys kind of share this strange connection, just if she brings it up, let her know. Like, I, I only want to be there as a friend and try to help her figure out whatever she wants to figure out. But I don't mean to push her. I, I really just kind of, I don't know. Like, I, I talk a lot. I kind of just assume that we had talked about it already. I don't know. Well, it, if she brings it up, I'll let her know, of course. And you've only tried your best and what you thought was right. It's, I can't in good conscience, say what little she's shared with me to you, but she definitely knows more than I about this whole thing, at least I believe. So it's, it's a little more, it's a little more intense for her, I believe. It's okay. Well, I'm not going to go even try to bug her for now. I'll let her be alone. And I've got a book to read again. Oh, what, what book? Oh, uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, a book about food, uh, recipes. Oh, more things to add to those um, snackums, as you were calling them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I know you don't, you know, you're you're more of a, a berry guy, but uh, you know, I just looking for new and interesting ways. No, that's that's fair, and to, to spice to spice things up, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know. I I understand. Uh, truth be told, I I don't actually need the berries. Uh, it just felt a bit. Well, I was never eating them. Oh. Well, sometimes, of course, but... Well, I can't... 
Did you did you try to feed them to the horses? Did the horses like them? I'm not sure if they liked them, but they, they definitely ate them. I mean, they're not they're not the greatest compared to the snackums or things I've had in my past, but they they serve their purpose. It's cra- It's kind of crazy. Adam. You you remember your past now? That's yeah. It's it is um it's strange. I didn't ask exactly what um, I should have asked what she had done to do that, but. It just kind of like looks off <laughs> in the distance, just kind of blankly for a second. Yeah, that was a bit of a mistake on my part, but I'm sure either I'll figure it out or there'll be time on when I return. Well, I've got a book to read, and uh, I'm sure we'll talk more about this soon. Well, maybe not soon, but at one point. Rubo kind of like goes and balls up under his kind of cloak uh, next to Damien in like the back of the cart. Chat one, there's mud in the way. If you don't get in the cart, you're going to have to wash your shoes. Mm. Mud. Grossness. How dare you put me in this situation? <laughs> That's all I wanted. I say, looking, I say looking up to the sky. Mud on your shoes. You're, 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 uh, all right. Yep. Okay. There it goes. I'll, uh, I'll climb up into the driver's seat and just kind of sit with my arms crossed. <laughs> M, as Chatwin <laughs> plops like a frustrated teenager into the <laughs> passenger seat. I think that's where we're going to end it for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for listening to our craziness tonight. If you liked what you listened to and want to hear more of it, please be sure to follow us on social media. We are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok as Chronicles of Kriath Pod, all one word and lowercase. And we also have a YouTube channel, Chronicles of Kriath Podcast. For those of you who aren't as fond of listening to us on your regular podcast platforms. And be sure to check those social media links and our website on Thursday. September 1st because that's where we'll be posting the link to our Patreon which we'll be launching then so if you want even more content than the social media and stuff gives you and you want to support us even further then please go subscribe it would mean the world to us but either way again thank you so much for listening everyone we will see you next time bye 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 Bye. <laughs>